sama students. So we will be discussing the lesson 3 of our module and this entitles quantitative demand analysis and under this are the following subtopics. The elasticity concept, price elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand, and income elasticity of demand. The objectives of this lesson are the following. Good managers learn to understand the nature of demand for products and effectively manage it. Effective management more knowledge than understanding the directional impact on sales for a given price change. Many other factors besides price affect consumer demand. Some of these factors have been discussed in our previous lesson. We will explain how managers can more precisely predict changes in various environmental factors and quantify their impact on product demand. The nature of product demand is that it is a process and as such is dynamic. Because many factors influence product demand, managers use demand analysis, which focuses on measuring the sensitivity demand to changes in a range of important Knowing the sensitivity of demand to changes in environmental factors lets a manager effectively respond to these changes. The sensitivity of one factor to another is called elasticity, or it measures the responsiveness of one variable to changes in another variable. The principal tool used to determine the magnitude of a change is called elasticity analysis. And for this elasticity, we have this formula. Elasticity of demand coefficient is equal to the percent change in quantity over percent change in price. And the meaning of change, I, I know all of you know how to compute the change in quantity and the change in price because this has been discussed in our marginal analysis. So, kung hindi pa, nalilito kayo, pwede pakibalikan ulit yung video natin about marginal analysis. So, to compute for the percentage, yung change in quantity, divide quantity, and to compute for the percentage change in price, the change in price over price. If other textbooks, ito yung makikita yung formula, this is also the same with this one, alam natin uh, we can use different variables um, to represent the numerator, which is dependent variable, and the denominator, which is independent variable. The elasticity of your grade with respect to studying can be denoted by this example formula. So, sa G, G represents the grade, S represents the studying. So, kung elasticity ang pinag-uusapan natin, the percent change in grade over percent change in studying. Notice that a change in grade over a change in studying represents the slope of the functional relation between grade and studying. It tells the change in grade that results from a given change in studying. By multiplying this by the SG or studying over grade, we convert each of these changes into percentages, which means that the Elasticity measure does not depend on the units in which we measure the variable G and S. 
we have two aspects of the elasticity which are very important. First is whether it is positive or negative and whether it is greater than 1 or less than 1 in absolute value. Kapag positive, an increase in studying leads to an increase in grade. So, kung ang answer natin dito is positive 2, alam natin na kapag uh, nagdadagdag ka ng time, ngali, 2 hours, additional 2 hours on your studying, it will result to additional increase in grade. What if negative? So, kung negative na yung uh, elasticity natin, it only means that an increase in studying leads to an decrease in grade. In short, kung nag-add ka pa ng additional 5 hours for your studying, baka hindi na healthy on your part. Kaya yung grade mo sa halip na mag-increase, nag-decrease na siya. Whether it is greater than 1 or less than 1 in absolute value. So, eto part na to will be discussed on the next uh, slide. What if we have this illustration? The quantity demanded is equal to 127 minus 50p. Pero paano ba tayo nag-resolve to compute in uh, 50, negative 50p? As you can see in our diagram, we have point A and point B. In point A, we have a price of 2.30 2 and a quantity of 12. In point B, we have 2.10 price and the quantity of 22. In our linear demand equation, given and where the slope of this demand curve is calculated quite easily as we move along the curve from point A to point B. The slope of the equation, these points can be calculated as natin, change in quantity demand. So, to compute for the change in quantity demand, we have 22 minus 12. And a change in price, which is 2.10 minus 2.30. As a result, we have 10 divided by negative 0 0.20, which is equals to negative 50. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? For every $1 decrease in the price, the quantity demanded increases by 50 units. Diba? Sabi natin to sa uh, aspects, kapag negative, we have, have negative 50, kapag negative siya, an increase in price will lead to a decrease in quantity. Although the slope might appear to be an appropriate measure of the degree of consumer responsiveness given a change in the price of the commodity, it suffers from at least two significant weaknesses. First, the slope of a linear demand is invariant, or this is constant with respect to price. That is, its value is the same regardless of whether the firm charges a high price or a low price for its product. Since its value never changes, the slope is incapable of providing insights into the possible repercussions of changes in the firm's pricing policy. 